nightclubs. A favourite place for many to go with their friends to drink and dance. But you never know who is planning to do what to you on the other side of the room. It's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. Number 1 Earlier this year, when our exams had finished, my friends and I decided that we would go clubbing to blow off some steam and to celebrate. The club we decided to go to was one with three floors, with each floor playing a different style of music. So as usual, as soon as we were inside we decided to split up. As it was post-exam season, the club was packed to capacity, so even though a few of us headed to each floor together, we soon got separated. I'm not sure how long I had been dancing for, but eventually, it was so hot, I felt as if I were going to pass out. So I began elbowing my way through the dancing swarm, towards the air-conditioned seating area near the back of the second floor. Obviously, no actual seats were free, so I just stood in the alcove and tried to cool down. One of my friends, Noor, is Muslim, and so for religious reasons, she does not drink, and she definitely does not hook up. She would literally only go to clubs in order to spend time with us and dance. That night she had joked that we were the teetotal twins, as I was banned from drinking due to just finishing up a course of antibiotics. I'm a medic, so I know not to cheat as I'm not exactly a fan of contributing to the rise of superbugs. With all of this in mind, you can see why it would have caught my attention when I saw her being piggybacked by a tall guy with messy light coloured hair, who was built like a rugby player. I called her name, but obviously, I could have been screaming directly in her ear and she wouldn't have heard me at the club. I ran after them and grabbed the guy's t-shirt, yanking him to a halt. He turned around and as he did, I saw Noor's head flop back. She was completely out of it. Is she alright? I yelled, pointing at her. The guy laughed and nodded. Yeah, yeah. She's just had a few too many and passed out. I can't quite describe the feeling that hit me at that instant. The closest I can get is the jarring jolt of panic that rips through you when you wake up in the morning, check your clock, and realise you slept through your alarm. Noor didn't drink. D does she want water or something, I said. Nah, it's cool. I'll just take her back to mine and let her sleep it off there. I really think she needs water first, I said. At this, the guide takes a step away from me and said that she was a total lightweight and how it happened all the time. It's alright. She's my girlfriend, he said. I just stared at him for a second and wondered what the hell I should do. I knew I couldn't fight this guy as he was about three times my size, but I sure as hell wasn't going to let him take my friend anywhere. But in the time it would have taken me to explain what was going on and ask for help from strangers, he'd be gone, and probably have taken Noor with him. I tried to stall him for time. Listen mate, I'm a medic, and she looks seriously dehydrated. Why don't you sit down with her for a second and I'll go get a glass of water. I only live round the corner, it's cool, he replied. Let me just try and wake her up before you leave, okay? He hesitated for a second, but finally nodded, and together we managed to persuade someone to move, so that he could set her down. Wait here, okay? He just nodded. I set off as though towards the bar, but as soon as I was obscured by the crowd, I made a beeline for the entrance to the second floor, where I knew there was always a bouncer on guard. I tried not to sound completely hysterical, as I yelled over the music to him that my friend had been drugged and some guy was trying to kidnap her. He told me to calm down and looked at me as though I were completely insane. Screaming I'm sober at someone is probably one of the least convincing things to say in order for them to believe what you're saying is true. 
I was in a panic, as I realised I shouldn't have left Nora alone with that guy. Please just come with me. Something must have gotten through to him, as he decided to follow me to check it out. When we got there, Nora was slumped forward, exactly where I had left her, and completely unconscious. But the guy was nowhere to be seen. I gave the bouncer the best description I could, but considering the lighting, I wasn't able to make up much more than the hair, his t-shirt, and the fact that he was six foot tall and hench. He could have been anyone, and he's still out there. The next day, she woke up with a splitting headache, and only fuzzy recollections of even going out that night. She has no idea what happened, no idea who the guy had been, and no idea how to thank me for saving her. If you see a girl who looks completely out of it, or utterly shit-faced, being carried out of a club, or leaving a club with a guy, I don't care how silly or cock-blockery you feel. Please, please, just take a second to make sure she's okay. Number 2 Back in my late teens in Dublin, Ireland, I used to head to a particular nightclub every single week, and got to know most of the regulars in there, to the point where I could sit at any table and know at least a few people. One night I was introduced to a new woman that no one really knew very well. I said hello, and made very short and polite conversation, and then went about my time dancing and drinking as normal. Nothing much of note happened during my time at the club. At the end of my night though, I left a little bit earlier than my friends, because I live really far away and outside of the city. I got a taxi home, and got to bed, falling into a deep slumber. I need to point out that I don't actually drink very much, and there was no way in hell I was drunk when this happened. I woke up in the morning, sunlight streaming through the room, and I immediately knew something was wrong. There was too much weight on the bed. I spun and looked down to the end of the room, and there, sat on the end of the bed, was the woman from the night before, staring at me wide-eyed, with utter devotion and a weird smile. It was absolutely horrible. I had no idea what to say, and so I said nothing. I was so weirded out by her expression and the whole bizarre nature of the situation. I was dumbstruck. It wasn't a lustful look. It was spooky, obsessive, and insane looking. I know for a lot of guys the idea of having some random woman appear in their bedroom might be a thrill, but this was nothing like that. It was scary, plain and simple. I got up, got dressed, summoned a bit of courage, turned to her and said, You're leaving. Now. And essentially marched her out the house, telling her that buses leave from the end of the road every half an hour. She left without a word. From talking to my friends and family, I pieced together what happened. After I left the nightclub, she had tried to catch up with me but instead had lost me. She went back, asked around until someone told her the rough area in which I lived, and got a taxi there. She then started knocking on random doors, waking up neighbours, and eventually one of them told them exactly where I lived. She then knocked on my door, and my sister came down to answer. She lied to her, saying that I had been expecting her. My sister was pissed off because she was woken up, but let her in. From there, she got into my room, and sat there for God knows how long, silently watching me. As it turns out, nobody from the club knew her at all, but we all assumed someone else must have known her. What really spooks me, though, is that if she had wanted to hurt me for whatever reason, she'd easily found her way right into my family home and into my bedroom. I'm shuddering just thinking about it. Number 3 I met him one night in a club, and he seemed nice enough. Good looking and friendly. We exchanged numbers at the end of the night and I looked forward to meeting him again. Nothing unusual. I was 18 and he was in his early 20s. 
and I spent a lot of time in clubs, so I was comfortable with everything. About a few weeks had passed, and he'd sent me a few texts and we decided to meet for a drink. He offered to pick me up from my house, but as I didn't know him that well yet, I arranged to meet him by the entrance to a hotel, on a main road near my house. We went to a pub, I had plans to meet a friend about nine, so we only stayed an hour, and he took me to where I was meeting my friend. We had a short kiss, and then left. I was glad it was over, as he was actually not interesting at all. Boring, in fact. He added me on Facebook and I accepted, but I didn't think that we'd speak much after that. I was very wrong about this. A month or so had passed, and we didn't meet again until one night out in our town where we met by chance. He told me he couldn't stop thinking about me. I was drunk, and foolishly kissed him as we parted ways again. A couple of days later, it says on Facebook that he's in a relationship. At least this meant he wasn't interested in me anymore, I thought. However, it was not long after that he sent me a text that read, I am obsessed with you. I told him to stop at this point as he had a girlfriend. He passed it off as just being flirty, and told me to get over it. For about six months after this, every few weeks he would text me. After the first message happened, he sent incredibly graphic details about how he wanted to have sex with me. I deleted him on Facebook, and kept asking him to stop. Sometimes he would include naked photos too. Keep in mind that I never got any further than a kiss with this guy. He texted me once about 10 months into our relationship whilst on holiday with his girlfriend, and told me that he wished it were me, not her. Again, I told him to stop. Each time I turned him down, he'd get annoyed and tell me that he'd never wanted to speak to me again. But sure enough, it was usually less than a month, I'd get a random naked picture again or something. All of the messages I could have ignored, but one night, I hadn't heard from him for a few weeks, and I was home alone, as my parents were on holiday. Bear in mind, this is something I hadn't told anyone. Around 1am my phone rings, and it's him, so I hang up. These texts followed. Him. Hey, let me in, I'm outside your house. Me. No you're not, leave me alone. Him. I am. I know you're alone. Let me in. Me. No, leave me the hell alone, I'm not home alone anyway, you're wrong, you don't even know where I live. Him. I do, I'm outside your house. Your room is the one with the red curtains. Which is correct. Me. No it isn't, and you've never been to my house. Him. I picked you up the first time we went out. Me. From about 10 minutes away from where I live, you've never been to my house. I take the opportunity to look out my bedroom window, and there was no one to be seen. Him. I just saw your curtains move. Let me in. I ran around the house, and turned off all the lights. I don't know why. I guess I just thought it would scare him off. Him. You just turned off all the lights. I know you're there. I was crying a lot now, and the last text I sent was, Leave right this second, or I'm calling the cops. If I ever see you, hear from you again, or have any contact with you again, I will call the police. His reply, You don't need to be a bitch about it, I'll go. I didn't ever hear from him again, but the whole thing almost lasted two years from that one very short date. I still get really nervous when I see someone who looks similar now. I still don't know how he knew where my house was, or that my parents were away that night, and I can only assume that he'd followed me. Number 4 I used to drink at a certain pub in Glasgow, and go on to a nightclub after. The pub was populated by bikers and other heavy music fans, and this one guy that wore pale blue jeans and a white iron shirt 
totally didn't fit in. Now I'm an antisocial girl, so I would sit in the pub with a book. I liked to pint, music, and having people around. I just didn't like talking. White shirt man kept trying. He would nod at me whenever I looked up, try to buy me a drink. I went to the bar several times and he sat at my table trying to start a conversation. And apparently saying sorry I'm not interested didn't mean a thing to him. A few days later I'm back and I was really dressed up because I felt like it. Creepy white shirt guy kept trying to catch my eye. When I walked around to the nightclub, he followed me persistently trying to get my attention. All night this dick had followed me. The club had three floors and was packed, but this guy would even wait outside the loos if I went in. One friend I left my drink with later admitted he put it down on the bar for a while. After a while I started feeling odd. Very odd. I was dizzy, sweating, shaking, and decided I must be coming down with something and headed home. I don't remember going down the stairs, but apparently white shirt guy followed me. However, the bouncer stopped the creep getting to me when he tried saying I had too much to drink. I used to run pubs. The bouncer knew that I knew my limits and that I wasn't drunk. I was ill. White shirt guy got pushy and Dal the bouncer ended up pinning him against a wall. However, during this time I wandered off. One street behind the club is the red light district. No idea how I got there, but I was spotted there hours later, walking up the main road by my home. My skirt was ripped. I had no shoes, bag or coat. A biker friend of mine who is also a cab driver recognized my tattoos from the back and stopped to see if I was okay. He instantly realized I wasn't, got me in his cab and phoned the nearby hospital to say he was bringing me in. Three days later I finally woke up and made enough sense to figure out what happened. My drink had been spiked with ketamine, a borderline dangerous dose. The cab driver talked to Dow the bouncer and between them they figured out what happened. The cab driver and his friends tracked down the white shirt creep and gave him a kicking. Then the railway lads heard about it as well and they gave him a kicking too. He was barred from the club and bar for life. It was an awfully long time before I ever went out again. Number 5 I'm from Denmark, so the drinking slash clubbing age is 18. My town is pretty safe. I live in a province town that isn't huge, but it's not small for a Danish town, with a population of around 70,000. It all started with my cousin and I had a rough day and felt the need to go out for the night. My cousin often goes out and she's pretty used to it. Whilst on the other hand, I'm an introverted nerd and I'm as soft as a marshmallow. It was around half midnight when my cousin and I were walking towards the club in almost complete darkness. Nothing special at this point. When we're halfway towards the club, I see two guys walking up behind us, and when they walk past us I comment to my cousin that I liked one of the guy's shirts. It was a funny shirt saying, single. Me and my cousin laugh. We walk for a while longer, and then we get to see those two guys again that are speaking an unknown language on the bench. My cousin then decides to comment on the guy's shirt, which makes him and his friend wanting for some reason to strike up a conversation. They introduce themselves and we introduce ourselves. They ask us where we're going and we tell them that we're going to the club. During the course of the conversation, they mention that one of the guys is 20 and the other one is 24. When they ask us how old we are, my cousin says she's 25 and I'm 18. One of the guy's eyes then light up when he hears that. And at this point we're pretty uncomfortable and they're acting a bit weird and the street is completely empty in the middle of the night. They then proceed to tell us that we shouldn't go to the club but go home with them and have a drink. 
They also tell us that their car is right around the corner. I look weirdly at my cousin and she exclaims, no. They follow us down the road, still trying to get us into the car with them. They tell us that they live nearby and that nothing's going to happen. They have alcohol which we can drink for free at home and it would be way more fun than going to the club apparently. They even try stepping in our way, but we quickly tell them no and that we don't want to go. Nonetheless, they were still pretty tall big guys and I was feeling intimidated. They go towards their car and we continue towards the club, unknowing that we should be seeing them soon again. My cousin tells me she's hungry, so we go to a little pizzeria down from the road where the club is. We get our food and sit down to eat, and towards the end of our meal, we spot the two guys looking in whilst walking past the pizzeria. They then return, but start talking with someone outside the place whilst we eat our last bite and walk out. As soon as we walk out, they start following us again. We get into the club, order a drink, and sit down at the booth. Two minutes go by and the guys walk in. They look over, order the exact same drinks as us, and start walking towards us. I'm too slow, and the guy with the shirt sits down next to me, but my cousin reacts faster and blocks the seat from the other guy from sitting next to her. So he just stands next to her, and they say something in their unknown language to each other again. They started asking us weird questions, and the guy in the shirt moved his hand up my leg, causing me to shake him off. They keep persisting that we should leave the club and go back with them to have some fun. My cousin looks at me, and the guy keeps moving his hand up my thigh. I tell him no and that it's not going to happen. After this, we're going home and that's that. My cousin then proceeds to show them her boyfriend. He's covered in tattoos and looks pretty scary. I think to myself, what the hell am I going to do now? I have no boyfriend. He asks me if I have a boyfriend. I panic and tell him that I do. And I show him a picture of my best friend. And I also tell him that my dad is coming to pick us up. He keeps saying, no, no, no. It doesn't matter that you have a boyfriend. We won't tell anyone. Don't worry. We'll drive you home afterwards. Just come home with us. He says this as he gets closer and closer. My cousin then has a great idea. She tells him that we'll call our boyfriend so that we can all have fun together. We leave for a bit to pretend to call her boyfriend and mine. And then we go back. And they're gone. What my cousin then told me sends shivers down my spine. The guy who was mostly talking to her was trying to get her alone and away from me because he said that they would have an even better time if it were just both of them and me. I know what they were planning to do to me wasn't good and I'm so glad that neither of us bought into their bullshit. So creepy guys at the club, let's not meet again. Hey guys, it's Mort here. And thank you so much for listening. 